Welcome to another edition of the OSU Sports Extra podcast. I'm Patrick Prince, joined as always by Oklahoma State beat writer and good friend, Kelly Hines. Um, Kelly, before we get going on OSU, we're filming this on a Wednesday. Tomorrow, obviously, season opener. But I want to reference one thing from last week that you and I talked about. I I thought it was very sly of you to kind of mention a Michael Scott slash office reference in your description. I don't think I quite gave that its due at the time. So this Thank week, you for I'm acknowledging that. nice work. Um, it's good to know that, you know, good TV shows. It almost makes up for the fact that you're not a fan of Friends. Uh, well, do you, do you Friends care to comment on that? Show. I, it's a terrible show. <sighs> it has not held up well over time. And it's not funny. I mean, I, from time to time, put it on because it's on a lot for whatever mm-hmm. reason. And I just sit there like with no expression, like nothing. At, how are you doing? Like, was that funny at some point? Like, it's not funny now. I don't know. Sorry, 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 sorry. I hate most things. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Well, but, you know, you do like The Office. We'll just hang our hat, hat yeah, on that. We would just have, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I, but The Office isn't as funny as Modern Family. And I know you like Modern Family. Oh, I love Modern Family. We can agree on that. The writing for Modern Family and How I Met Your Mother, those are two funny shows, in my personal opinion. Um, Friends is not funny. I'm a huge fan of Friends, but I think Modern Family is my favorite comedy in my adult lifetime. I mean, the character development and the way they tie things together, like, they'll, like, revisit things, like, years later, and you're like, how did they plan that? It just it's just really good the, the continuity person on yes. that show has to just it, it, it's got to be a team of like people with memories like Barry Lewis I mean just it's crazy yeah but like did they write the whole series like before they started because the way things tie together from like season to season is like remarkable yeah yeah, it's, yeah we, that's we could talk about that for an entire podcast uh, it actually it. would be really entertaining. But I, I, I find that interesting. That's All right, let's talk. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little football. Uh, season starts in earnest tomorrow night. Um, let's talk a little big picture season stuff for OSU. If I said to you OSU is going to win ten games this year, you'd say what? Um, I'd say that's entirely possible. I, I think that that's there for them. Um, you know, you have to have things go right um, for you, but I think the schedule allows for that. Um, you know, should be undefeated in, in non-conference play. Obviously, things crazy things happen, but I, I feel like you're going to go into that game at Baylor um, to start October. Um, you know, you should be in good shape, barring injuries and weird setbacks, that sort of stuff. Um, that's a huge game, though. Um, there are a lot of big games on the schedule, but I definitely feel like with what this team has on offense back and the developing pieces on defense, that there's a, a possibility for that. You don't have to rely on your, you shouldn't have to rely on your defense to bail you out of bad situations like has been in the past. Like um, the defense obviously has some, some key players to replace, but um you have talent on offense that you should be able to get it done on offense. You don't need the defense to be what it was last year. That'd be great though, but just be consistent. And I I just feel like there's a lot of potential with this team. And to me, that's what makes it exciting. You don't know exactly what direction it's going to go, but you, you think that it could be a good thing. And, and, you know, it's not really the same feeling as I had like going into the 2011 season, because, you know, last season really was a season like that, but just a, a season that, you know, has a lot of anticipation and a lot of optimism that I think is very deserved based on how they ended the year last year and um, just the pieces that they have. That was a really long answer for that. that I don't know. That, that may have been a one word answer would have been okay. No, no, that's good. Hey, that's, that's, uh, let's, let's get inside your head on stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, okay. So I really like place inside my head. Uh, well, so. I wasn't going to say that, but since yeah. you mentioned it, um, I really like what you wrote today. Uh, you just wrote kind of 10, uh, well, and every day, frankly. And every, yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get that out of the way. Um, you know, 10 players to watch, good stuff. Um, but let's uh, talk about, let's do one offense, one defense. Pick one From that list or kind of, could it be someone else? What's that? From that list? 
Oh, absolutely. Whoever. Yeah, just give us one player that maybe on offense that you're most looking forward to see for whatever reason. Could be a star, reserve, whoever. Just who who's going to catch your eye tomorrow? I kind of want to say Dominic Richardson is is the guy who I want to see what he can do as an every down back. But there's this other part of me that um, just enjoys Brennan Presley so much that I'm like, I want to see what that guy is going to do. Um, and, then, you know, that that's on special teams also. He's just um, – so dynamic and electric that um he does things that are really enjoyable to see so um definitely one of those guys I mean I feel like with Spencer Sanders we we know what he does like he's shown that um and I think what's what's um most appealing with him um is that he is that leader um not just within the offense but with the whole whole team um and his confidence is is contagious um, but you know, a lot of skill position guys who are just there, they have high potential and you just want to see how it comes together. But you know, that may be a little bit unfair to say that with, with, that Brennan would be like the one guy to watch because we, we know what he can do. I just always look forward to seeing, um, the, the step that someone makes from one year to the next. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Was that a tail or was that a foot? What, what was that? that? That was, that was, that was a tail. Go ahead. Let's... This is Fezzy. Fez, oh. um, he's one of the, um, if we're going to talk TV. He's one of the, um, that 70s show, um, Kittens. Uh, we, we don't have Eric or Donna because I don't really care for those characters, but we have Hyde, Kelso, Jackie, and Fez. Did, you name, all all? Did you name them all? Uh, those were the names that they came with, um, okay. but I... Sometimes if I don't like the names, I change them. I could have changed their names. Um, they were all going to be euthanized. So i um, really glad that that didn't happen. Um, they're just here with me. Um, hopefully uh, going to be leaving real soon to go to awesome homes. That'd be so great. This is the one who destroyed my media guide. Um, this is the art and this is the artist. He had some help, though. <laughs> it was something about the orange page. Maybe he thought the orange was going to taste yeah, good. They didn't attack any other pages, just the cover. Yeah. But you know how media guides used to have that like slick cover? They don't do that anymore. I'm just glad that they have media guides, um, especially ones that are bound. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they they went after that page. Like, oh, here's a piece of it. There are little pieces of this media guide all over. The house all over. So great. And we're sure you didn't tear that with your nails. That didn't happen. Your no. small they, they, they use their teeth. Um, I, I guess if I really wanted to, I could use my teeth too. But probably good. Teeth. All right. How about how about a player on defense? Uh, let me tell you. Oh, sorry, I forgot what we were talking about. Um, yes, on defense. Um, let me let me tell you mine first. Tell me what you think. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you mine, then you tell me yours. That they, they, they obviously don't have to be the same. For me, it's Kendall Daniels. Okay, that's a really good one. It's a really I just, good one. I mean, I say this often. I just really enjoy watching local high school stars that we've come to know, whether it be, you know, two years or four years, go to the next level. Malcolm Rodriguez is another example. I just love seeing the local kids and see how they do at the next level. And he was a big time recruit. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't going to say him, but now I want to. You talked me into that. Um, what Kendall has been able to do. Um, you know, to come in and, um, you know, I, he said when we talked to him recently that last season was really challenging for him, um, being patient, but it's like, man, you don't have to be patient for very long. Like you're already in the starting lineup as a retro freshman. Like there are guys who like wait their whole careers and never have an opportunity like that. But I think he just meant because he knew that he had potential and that like that confidence. Um, I, you know, being a defensive back, like, I, that's just, that you have to have confidence if you're going to play any of those positions. So um, I think that um, he is one of those guys who I, I think definitely has that. I think definitely that sounds really like convincing. Um, he just has that potential to be um, a breakout player. And I guess everybody has that potential, but based on what they're talking about, you know, with him, I feel like he is going to be a guy we'll be talking about a lot. I just yeah. feel like he is. And um, I'm kind of like you. It's the guys who we, you know, heard their stories as they were growing up and now to yeah. see them on a bigger stage. Um, not to say it's more satisfying. It's just like you feel more of a connection maybe to those players. 
Yeah. Because, you know, as, as you know, it's, it's, it can be hard, especially when you're new on a beat, it can be hard to really feel a connection to, to, to college football players um, because um, you're not talking to them on a daily basis. Like we've, we talked to Kendall Daniels, you know, once during the preseason. So you're kind of like grabbing on to what you can grab onto. And when it's guys from Bixby or Beggs or anywhere in Tulsa Jinx, you know, like those are the guys you, you feel a little bit more of a connection with because you were aware of them during their high school careers or maybe even covered them. So um, I am with you on that. I, I think um, Kendall has um, a very high ceiling. So obviously that's true for him to be in the starting lineup as a redshirt freshman. Yeah, 100%. Okay, Kelly, uh, what do you expect to see out of this game? If you want to offer a little score prediction, feel free. I, I definitely think that um, this is not going to be the same as when these teams played previously, um, which, you know, that was six years ago. Uh, a lot has happened since then. Um, but I just feel like uh, OSU has a lot of momentum from last season. Um, I think this is going to be a game that um, – Spencer Sanders establishes, you know, the, the tone of the season. I, I think that's entirely possible with this game. So um, I, I think 41-14, um, 41-17, I think something like that. I think um, Central Michigan has also a ton of talent at its skill positions as the FBS leader from last season as it's, as it's running back. Um, good receivers, uh, an NFL-type tight end, um, a, a really solid quarterback, um, I just feel like um, OSU's defense is going to be able, if you, if you can do, do, be a good defense in the Big 12, you can be a good defense against um, a MAC team. I'm sorry, that's yes. just the way it is. Um, I just feel like that, that's a game that OSU will want to get some things going that can carry over um, for the rest of the season. You want to get Dominique Richardson um, comfortable. Um, you want um, your receivers who um, were young last year to show that they've grown up. Uh, you just you want to get some things accomplished in this game. And, um, you know, I know that it, it in some small ways, like I think people care that um, Mike Gundy's going for his 100, 150th career win. Um, and that, you know, something that should happen tomorrow night. So you just want everything to go according to plan, show that all your work in the offseason paid off, that all the, the momentum that you established last season can carry over to a new year. I think all of that is there for OSU. Yeah. All right, we'll leave it there for this week. Uh, Kelly and I will be coming at you every Wednesday. You can download us for free, uh, Google, Apple, or Spotify. And uh, Kelly, good luck in Stillwater tomorrow night. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Sounds good.